Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WEV Radio. Relax and enjoy the sounds of the drum beat in this. 7 MTV Music Video Awards. The Funky Divas of Soul and Mo. For Soul Train Awards. These girls can sing. 7 Grammy nominations. Everybody, this is the Funky Divas Podcast. What up, what I'm Cindy. up? I'm Terry. I'm Rona. And, and we're, we're in Vogue. And this is the Funky Divas Podcast. That's Show right. So where do we start? Where does this story start? Let's start with um, the name Funky Divas. That's a good How one. How it came to be. Okay. Wow. So we were I'll in the studio, learning. right? <laughs> yeah, working on the <laughs> second album, trying to figure out a name for the title of the second album. Right. And our producer, Denzel Foster, actually came up with the title Funky Divas. And that was a term that wasn't being used because the word diva sort of had a, it had that, a slight negative connotation, negative connotation mm-hmm. in that a diva was a leading lady from a, a a musical or a theatrical performance or an opera and but it, it kind of had an egotistical you know aspect to it because we we all were divas in that everybody in the group sang lead so there wasn't a single leading lady mm-hmm. but <laughs> the music that we were uh, diva ing to was pretty funky mm-hmm. hey now so he thought of the title <laughs> funky divas and so oh, we were like yeah okay let's go with it now I had a slightly different take on it. I because of what you said, it had a you know the word diva has a slightly negative connotation, and um, I remember okay, why do we have to be divas? All right, I'm gonna look it up in the dictionary, and I looked it up and I saw that oh it's a leading lady who sings lead in theater and opera, and I was like, okay, all right, okay, well we are singing lead, the music's more funkier around this second time around, so maybe I can I can deal with that. But I used to go to this metaphysical bookstore called the Bodhi Tree. Shout out to the Bodhi Tree. I Shout out to the, the Bodhi Bo- Tree. I, I too, because I practically lived in that store. Yeah, man. Um, I, I went there one day, and this man walked up to me, and um, he kind of scared me, too, because I was on this aisle, and I didn't see anybody else on the aisle. And I'm looking at books, and he walks up on me, and he actually called me a diva. And I thought, wow, that was really, really odd. Um... And I was like, okay. And I thought he was flirting at first, but he he actually wasn't. So he calls me a diva and um, he says what it is. And he starts talking to me about these different books that I should get. And I'm thinking, okay, I really don't want to talk to this man right now. I just want to be in this bookstore picking books out that I want. So he's telling me about all these books to get. And so I grab this book off the shelf, one of the ones that he suggests. I grab it off the shelf. And I opened it, and when I opened it, I opened it to this page, and I immediately saw the word diva. It's spelled, it was spelled D-E-V-A, and it means angels. And I thought, oh my gosh, so that was the turning point for me. That made, I, I, I felt like, okay, you know what? It gave it a refreshed it, meaning. Yeah, it did. It just you. took it to another level for me. I remember uh, a, a, a song that I wrote called Sister, Sister, one of the lines I wrote in that song was, we are angels in disguise standing side by side. Aww. And it was because of that. <laughs> and you know what else I want to say? Um, the word diva wasn't so commonly used in a, in a positive light right. manner. Right. Um, but after the album, Funky Divas came out, more and more People started using it as a very common term, referring to themselves Everybody as diva, was using referring it. Yeah. to their friends as diva. Yep. It was like, hey, diva. It was mm-hmm. like, hey, it's it's okay now. You know, it's right. a positive um, right. term to use. Album. And it was cover. the album cover, Funky Divas, exactly. was the title of the album. And it was the four original members of In Vogue on that album cover. You as, remember those outfits we had on? Oh, my gosh. I love those outfits. The, we had on. Sort of that actually, 1940s look of us. We kind of looked yeah. at like. Pinstriped like, or something. Yes. We yes. were in the streets yeah. maybe of Europe. With French yeah, berets. Like, yeah, with French berets. Cool. But do you remember the other photo? We had on um, these huge tulle peplin skirts. Yes. And we had on fishnets and combat boots. Yep. With leather with, jackets. With leather like jackets. That. And just we were just jeweled to the nines. And hats. They yeah. thought they were fashionable. Yeah, and it looked like we were in the streets of Paris just <laughs> being funky divas. <laughs> that's cute, though. That's super cute. It the was tool cute. with the, the combat it's, boots. It's, that's it's right up my alley. <laughs> I was about to say, that's how Rona dresses now. <laughs> You're listening to the Funky Divas podcast. Mm-hmm, what they say it. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey everybody, this is the Funky Divas Podcast. What up, I'm what Cindy. Up? I'm Terry. I'm Rona. And, and we're, we're in Vogue. And this is the Funky Divas Podcast. That's Show right. Now. I always wanted to be an entertainer as far back as I can remember. Um, music and dance was very appealing to me and I was always singing. Um, and my Michael dad Jackson. actually, yeah, I, I know, did right? later. <laughs> Michael Jackson, my dad uh, was a singer and had a singing group. Mm. I think they were. I didn't know this, Cindy. Hearts. I think one of the first things that I ever harmonized with, I was six years old, and it was the theme to the Bugs Bunny show with my dad. Nice. Aww. And he said, "You sing, sing this, sing this. This is the Bugs Bunny show." I remember that. And he would harmonize to it, and he was How like, "Hey, cute. Oh, she can harmonize." Cute. But um, one of my first memories was being at one of his vocal rehearsals, and there, it was it was three or four guys and one female, and it was just so exciting to me. <laughs> but later, um, I I sang, I did school plays, I followed That's my cool. older sister around, wow. who was a vocalist. She sang in a band. Hey, Cammy. And um, hey, from Cammy. there, yeah, my older sister Cammy <laughs> Carmelita, and <laughs> we. Um, we did community theater, musical theater every summer, and and from there I just it just expanded. So nobody ever told me, "Hey kid, you've you've got a lot of talent." But I did have a lot of belief in myself, and I did get cast in a lot of theatrical roles and parts. And mm-hmm. I probably had more belief in myself than faith. I mean, I'm sorry, more faith in myself than talent. Mm, and I really, love that's it, what you that's guys yeah, yeah, like, I believed. I believed takes. I was all of that. That's right. Um, and if so I believed it, and they believed it. They believed it because I believed it. That's right. <laughs> and all of that, Show ultimately, right. I ended up at an In Vogue audition. And, uh, I, you know, it was a little intimidating that day because all of the female art vocalists that were there that day really had amazing vocal ability, in my opinion. And I didn't expect to get in the group. I really, I didn't expect to get in this group. And, but I did. I got in and that really just changed the whole trajectory of my, of my life as an entertainer. Because just I, a little I never, bit. You know, I never <laughs> expected to be in a girl group. I thought if anything, I'll be a solo artist. And really, if anything, I'm going to be an actress. Because I moved to Los Angeles to pursue acting because Hello. I was having success there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got in the group and the, the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, Taryn. I started singing um, about the age of 12, and I was sitting on the floor. My sister, Vanessa, was my first inspiration. She used to sing, and she sang in a band. And uh, she was on the couch. We were all in the living room watching cartoons. And I was sitting on the floor, and I don't remember which cartoon. I think it might have been Speed Racer. Ooh, Speed because Racer. Because that was my favorite cartoon. And I remember I was humming it. I didn't realize I was until my sister said, oh, Terry, do that again. And I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. And she was like, do that again. So whatever it was, I did it again. And she was like, oh, you can sing. And from that day forward, she would have me rehearsing every day uh-huh. after school, every day. And um, I remember her process in helping develop my voice. Um, she would put on records and she would have me sing along with the records and so I would she would just tell me just when you hear her breathe you breathe and just hit that note. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't you, know it was Vanessa she, that did that. Yeah. That's she cool. she used to sing in a band. And so she would just have me mimic the vocalist that I would hear on the records that she would play every day. And then my voice just started developing and then um I joined the the concert choir, the jazz band, the jazz choir. I was in every choir, the church choir. Um, And then I started singing, as I I got of age, I started singing locally (laughs) in um, probably every doggone band in Houston. (laughs) They're still gigging too, by the way. Wow, wow. Um, And then the last band I was in was called Cosmic Energy. Hey now! No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Electric Knights. You got me excited. It was. They were called. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, good tea. And and I was gigging with a friend. His name is Mark Felton, who was friends with Gary Reeves. That was your friend. And um, Gary. Gary said that two guys out of the Bay Area, Denzel Foster and Thomas McElroy from Club Nouveau, were holding auditions for this for a girl group. And um, he asked Mark if he knew any female singers. And Mark said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have one in my band. And so Mark called and he said, look, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you need to get to California and audition uh, for this girl group. I took my rent money. 
I bought an airline ticket, which was exactly $244, which was exactly what my portion of the rent was. Hmm. And I flew to California, auditioned, numbers. got there incredibly late. And Cindy was so gracious. When I got there, I was, you know, like a fish out of water. And she took me to the car and she said, well, this is the song you have to learn. This is the part. And she went over it with me. And then I, I went in and I auditioned. And that was my experience. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got the call. I, had, I was having a house party because it was homecoming week. And me and my friends were partying. And then I got the call from Denzel Foster and Maxine Jones calling to tell me. And they were acting like I didn't make it. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, hey, Max, shut up, shut up. <laughs> hey, y'all, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and they were both like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm all right, I'm all right. And then they just, you know, kind of blurted it out. First they tried to make it seem like, oh, we're calling to give you bad news. But then I was like, oh, my God, my God. And that was it. <laughs> And then I became a member of the Vogue. Shout out. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that last part before. I learned something new today. Okay, so, uh, Ro Beasy for Sheezy. This is Rona Bennett. Yes, coming at you live. Coming at you live. <laughs> and I started similar to Terry and Cindy. I started at a young age, about seven or eight, singing in my parents' basement. Real special with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My parents thought I was a little, you know. They would have to tell me to be quiet. Very often I was able to entertain myself on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Very well. <laughs> but I remember I used to travel down to Alabama with my sister uh, to visit both of my grandmothers, but my maternal grandmother used to take care of foster kids. Mm-hmm. And my cousins would come over and somehow, you know, I would end up putting together these talent shows for whoever wanted to come over and see it. And it was my grandmother that told my parents, hey, maybe you want to pay attention to Rona. Like, they would just tell me to be quiet. Yeah. Uh, but after that, <laughs> they started paying attention, and my mom put me in choir, so mm-hmm. similar to you, uh, mm-hmm. good foundation. I also started singing for a pretty popular choir in Chicago called the Soul Children of Chicago, so shout, shout out, out to, to the Soul, Soul Children. Yeah. Yes. And then I uh, somehow dipped off into acting uh, mm-hmm. once I discovered that that was a thing. Just a little tight tap. <laughs> And was into the child entertainment thing for quite some time. And then after that, I moved to Hollywood where I felt the big dogs play. Okay. And then eventually that path led me to you all. I Mm -hmm. um, was in the studio recording with a a demo with one of my Mouseketeer buddies. And um, the producer that was with him had been working on Soul Flower, which is the 2004 record Mm -hmm. for EV. And um, he said, I don't know if you'd be interested, but, you know, In Vogue is looking for another member. And at the time, I was focused on a solo career. Mm -hmm. But I was like, all right, I don't know, you know. So I uh, met Denzel Foster, one of the founders of the group. He listened to some of my um, music that I created with Rodney Jerkins Mm -hmm. uh, for my solo record. And then, thank you. And then I uh, flew up to the Bay, met Sin and T, and that was it. It just kind of worked. Yep. Off and on, I have been with this brand uh, 17 years in October. Wow. It just sounds kind 17? of bananas. <gasps> wow. Wow. Yeah, so shout out to the 30 years yes. for the brand. 30 years of the brand. Right. We are still here, thank God. Thank yeah. You, still going strong, still doing what we love to thank do. You, love. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and thanks, thanks to, to all of you fans for just... Being on board with us since the very beginning. Day one. No matter what the configuration of the group, you've stuck with us and hung in there and you come out and see our shows and um, and, and it's because of you that we've been able to do what we love to do so many years, 30, celebrating. Wow. So celebrate with us because we're just going to have a great time. Yep. Funky Divas Podcast, baby. Hey everybody, this is the Funky Divas Podcast. What up, I'm what Cindy. up? I'm Terry. I'm Rona. And, and we're, we're in Vogue. And this is the Funky Divas Podcast. That's Showing right. Up. 30 um, years. Can yeah. you believe the In Vogue brand being in the uh, industry? You sure it's 30? It's been 30. It just flew by. Wait. It was 30 years ago. Y'all grown. April 3rd, that Hold On came out and hit the charts. Wow. And that song took off overnight. Like yes, we it were did. playing catch up. Literally, like yeah. for that first year we were playing catch up. Yeah. And I really didn't expect that. That song, I didn't expect anything to take off like that. I, I just didn't have great expectations. I don't, I, you know, you hear so many stories. There was so much great talent in the San Francisco Bay Area, and there was always these stories about so and so got a record deal. 
you know, so and so just recorded their album. They just got picked up by this record label, and then sometimes you wouldn't hear much. Of, it just wouldn't take it off. Take off. Right, right. So I was like, oh, what if this is just a tax write off for 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 the record label? You know, and that, <laughs> true. That's how they used to do it. A lot. <laughs> single took off overnight, and we hit the road, and we were just we were we were gone. We were gone. We were doing everything. We were playing these little these clubs and the small venues at first, right? Hitting radio stations all along the way and with that one one record. And remember record. we, you know, during that time usually an act would have more than one hit single out to go on the road. But we only had hold on and then we got an um a uh, proposal from MC Hammer. Hey, now. And we were like, oh my gosh. And they were like at the time they were like, that's unheard of. MC Hammer's calling you to do a tour with him and you only have one hit single. So we were, oh my gosh, it was it was amazing, and just being on tour with him. Remember, we learned so we, much. We learned a lot. Oh my god! Remember, we would he would come and watch our show every night, and um, after the show, he would make comments and say, you know, you guys feel free to get on my speakers. You know, the, the audiences they want you, they want you to engage. Get on top of my speakers, and 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 remember, he actually bought us equipment. Yes, he did. He bought he us equipment. Bought he was us so lent us generous. Equipment. And I remember us um, having a conversation in our dressing room saying that, wow, if we ever have the opportunity to headline our own tour, we were going to be just as nice to them as Hammer was to us. Remember that? That's yes. big. When somebody yeah. does that, so you want to pay it forward. Exactly. Yeah. It's good culture. Good yep. music culture. Yep. And we got the opportunity in 94 with um, uh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development. Yes. Yeah. Who's still funky to oh this day? They are still funky. Are they not? Yes. We saw them when it was about a couple of months ago now. Yeah, yeah. we were on a, on a show. I can't speech. even remember yeah. where we were. I can't remember where we were. It was we around were. Christmas time. Yes, so it was a few months ago. Arrested but, Development yeah, was were, on the bill, and they crushed it. They, they were crushed it. so good. But back to Hold On, having taken off, <laughs> and us just playing catch up that whole year. It was just mm -hmm. an amazing experience you know, traveling the United States and traveling abroad for the first time, like going yeah. to Europe and just um, connecting with our record label there and the audiences there and radio and television. Remember we did Top of the Pops? Oh my gosh, Which was yeah. one of their big mm, yeah. uh, television shows. I um, remember for that show, we didn't, we felt like we didn't have the proper wardrobe and we were doing press at the same time and we had like an hour before we had to start doing press. And we discovered this store called Miss Selfridges. And we were Department in that store, store like little kids. Oh my we gosh. lost our minds and we were just <laughs> buying all kinds of clothes and hats and stuff, getting ready for our press and our performance. That was that was really awesome. That was an awesome experience. That's because we were born to sing. Which yeah. brings me back to Oh yes. How do we come album. up with that title? We came up with that title. I know y'all gonna remember, but I'm gonna take credit for it. Okay. We were all trying to come up with names. And Denny said, okay, you guys go home and just, you know, we're going to put names in a hat and just, you know, come up with something. So anyway, I remember sitting in my room and I was thinking about my journey from when I first started singing all the way to coming to California to be in the group. And I thought, for all of us to be here now, we were born to sing. This was fate. And I remember coming back to the studio and we were all, you know, given our names and that that just popped for everybody. So we all agreed on it. Everybody felt really good about that. And we were like, yeah. Nice. Yes, we're born to sing. Nice. Mm -hmm. It was a fitting title. Fitting yes. title. <laughs> and how fitting is the first episode of the yes. podcast? Born, born to, to sing. sing. There it is. 